Uh, guys, just to let you know, this is a U-shaped function, okay, because it has a positive x squared. You solve it, you can solve it using the minus b formula, or if you remember how to uh, do the reference number, that'd be better. Two numbers that multiply to give you minus 6, but add to give you minus 1. You're going to get x minus 3 and x plus 2. You're going to get x equals minus 2 and x equals 3. Now, what this essentially means is that these are the roots of the equation. It means it crosses the x-axis at 3 and minus 2. Which is a U-shaped equation like so. Everybody cool with that? Yeah. Now, next question. The graph of the four quadratic functions are shown below. And so that's a graph A and graph B. We're looking for one that crosses at minus 2 and crosses at 3. So not those two. This one here, would everybody be happy with that one there? Okay. And go, which one of the above is this one here? And you say, uh, graph D, Y. Don't say I put it into my calculator and all the points match my calculator. That's not the best answer possible. X squared, no, it does ask me. Oh, just graph D. I'd usually give a reason as well. Doesn't ask you for a reason though, does it? No. Fair enough. Graph D, uh, I'm just going to do it anyway, is a U shaped function. Which has roots. So x squared minus x minus 6 is a U shaped function which has roots minus 2 and. So I'm just giving a written explanation of why I picked that. Okay. In this case, you technically don't have to. Okay, next question. Here is a function g of x. Everybody happy it's a standard u-shaped function? And then it asks us on the next, uh, on the next, uh, I think it's down here, is it? What does it ask us next? What is g of x plus 1, is it? So here's our graph here. And what it wants us to do is it wants us to label two new graphs. So now what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna I'm gonna test out you can test this out in your calculator if you want. See x squared, see the way you have your first graph g of x equals uh, x squared minus two x. Everybody go with that? Can everybody tell me what would uh, what would uh, h of x be then? G of x plus two. So what would that mean? X squared minus two x plus Two. You could all throw that into your table function, couldn't you? And if you threw it in your table function, you'd know how to draw it. What would happen is every point you have here would go up two. So because you add two onto it, every point you have here goes up by two. So this is the way this graph will look. If you aren't sure, you could also just put it into your into your calculator and your calculator will work out. Now the next one's more difficult. How would you do uh, gx plus 2? The next one's gx plus 2. How would you do that? g of x is g blank equals blank squared minus 2 times blank. How would you do uh, How would you do gx plus 2, lads? How would you do it? Just anywhere you see, anywhere there used to be an x is now an. Now, you don't even need to multiply that out, believe it or not. Because you can just go straight into your table function on your calculator and you can do uh, x plus 2 uh, squared minus 2 times x plus 2. And you should be able to get all the points. How far do I have to draw to? If you look at your graph, it should tell you how far you need to go. Minus 2 up to 4, isn't it? Minus 2 up to 4. Minus 2. As far as four, step of one. There's your points there. Minus two zero. Here. Uh, what's the next one? Minus two zero. Minus one minus one. All right. After that. Zero zero. Here. Keep going. Uh, one tree. One tree and two a. 1, 3, 2, 8, and the next one's probably going to be out of range. 
315. You're not going to fit in 315, 315 somewhere up here. So, you draw this graph, it looks something like this. Did anybody get that out? Anybody get it out? No? Does anybody have any questions about it? What I did and how I got the answers? I used the original equation. The original equation is g of x, and on the first one, I just added on 2. In the second one, instead of having gx, I replaced the x, which is this part here. I replaced the x with x plus 2, and then just drew out the graph. Peter? Yeah. Keep the door open when you're on your way out. Thanks. What is guaranteed about the y-axis? What's guaranteed about the y-axis? Your x value always equals zero. So zero cubed plus three times zero squared minus nine times zero plus five. And the answer is simply zero, five, isn't it? Because you replace the x value with zero, you find the y value. Verify the graph of f cuts the x-axis at x equals minus 5. If it cuts the x-axis, what does that mean? The point is minus 5, 0. Does that make sense? This means that the y value has to be 0 when you replace the x value with... When you replace the x value with minus 5, the y value has to be 0. Otherwise, it won't be on the x-axis. You're replacing all your minus fives here. You put it all into the calculator, and long behold, you'll get y equals zero. And this verifies it's on the x-axis. We good so far? Okay. Any questions about what I just did there a second ago? How'd you find the turning points? Local max and local min, anybody remember? What's guaranteed about the max and the min? What's guaranteed? And what's guaranteed about the slope? Slope is zero. In differentiation, what's the slope? How do you get the slope in differentiation? The first derivative, isn't it? The first derivative is your slope. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to get the first derivative and you're going to have to find out where does that first derivative equal zero. Do you get me? So where does that first derivative equal zero? What two points does it happen at? Let's find out. And if you weren't too sure, you could have a rough guess, couldn't you, by just throwing it all into the calculator. You could have a rough guess of it right here. What I'm doing here will not entitle you to full mark. So if you do like this, uh, x cubed, you're just going to draw the graph out almost, minus 3x squared, minus 9x, plus 5. Start at minus 10, end at 10, and look for your maximum and minimum y values. You're on your way? On your way down or on your way up? I actually think you're on your way up. Why? You're becoming less negative, aren't you? So actually, I'm wrong. It actually comes up like this, then back down again. I think that's what's going to happen. Keep going until you turn around. Ah, minus 1. Minus 110 might be your first maximum. Minus 110. Now keep going down until you hit rock bottom. 5, minus 6, minus 17, minus 22. Everybody think 3 minus 22? Now, they're not guaranteed, but they're pretty damn close. Let's find out for real. Your first derivative equals 3x squared, yeah? Yeah. Awesome. And what do we know about the first derivative? The first derivative is the, and that equals, divide both sides by, yeah, yeah, and your two numbers, 
Oh, we're actually lucky. The two answers we got, I think, are the two answers that are actually. No, I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It's the other way around. It's minus three and plus one. Okay, what's the x value then? Lads, what's the x value? Minus one and the y value. Oh, sorry, and the other x value? Three. How do you get the y values for each one? We already know the answer, don't we? Don't we already know the answer? But in the exam, what would you have to do? You'd have to show that you subbed it back in, even though you already know what it is. Show that you're not going crazy on the table, on the calculator, even though you are. Okay, so you, you'd uh, do it out again. And then you put in those numbers. Now, which one has to be the maximum, do you think? Which one has to be the maximum? The one that has the bigger Y value. Whichever one has the bigger Y value is always the maximum. So one is 10 and this one's minus 22. So three minus 22 is the min and minus 110 is the max. Are you all right with that lads? Why does the biggest Y value always have to be the max? Because the max is always above the min, isn't it? Max is always higher up than the min. So that means that the max has to have the higher y value. Everybody cool with that? The, sec the book talks about doing the second derivative and all that, but it's not necessary once you say that the max has the higher y value. Sorry, James. Yeah. Now, let's move on. Hence, sketch a graph, the axis. Does everybody know how to sketch a graph using your table function? All right, I'll skip this part then. All right, next one. Uh, anybody have numbers for this? Come on, Daniel. Daniel threw it into his calculator, and he got 0, 9, 16, 21, 24, 24. And then he got a 9 and 0. And you're going to draw out all these points, 0, 0. 1, 9, 2, 16. You get the point, don't you? 3, 21, and 4, 24. You're going to draw all these points out. Okay. Is a, a question I always ask you guys. Is 525 guaranteed to be the maximum? Is 525 guaranteed to be the maximum? Uh, why? He says yes, but why? No. Just because it's the highest doesn't mean it's the maximum. The maximum could be at 5.1 or 4.9 for all of them. They always go back down. There's a hint here. Either side of it is the same number. When that happens, it's guaranteed to be the maximum. If, however, John, in cases where, let's say, for argument's sake, that was 23, or let's say this was 24.5, the, the maximum might, might not be at 525. It could be at 5.1, 25.2. You don't know unless it's symmetrical. If it's symmetrical, you're dead certain. And if it's not symmetrical, you need to use differentiation to get the perfect max. That makes sense? All right. Now, you, you can hear me in the video previously. I said the same thing, but look, it is what it is. All right, draw this out. Zero, zero. What do we have then? 1, 9. What's it? 3, 16. 2, 16. Thank you. After that. 3, 24. 3, 21. 4, 24. Yeah, and now it gets easy because it's symmetrical on the way down. All right, excellent. Now, uh, all right, all right, bit messy, but you get the point. You'd be better with with pen than I am. Thank you, Daniel. Now, use a graph to estimate the height of the rocket after two point five seconds. Darren, what do we do here? Height of the rocket after two point five seconds. What do we do?
Lads, I got 20 roughly. What did you guys get? Oh, sorry. I sort of, uh, sort of, went, sort of went diagonal there, didn't I? You got 19. They just somewhere between 19 and 20. I'm going to go for 19.5 for me. Okay. Any way you can cheat using your calculator? You could do a step of 0.5 and you could find the exact answer, couldn't you? Yeah. What time will the rocket be at this height again? So we have to go through the rocket and go out through the sides. Sorry. So when will the rocket be this height again? Draw across. Go straight down. Oh, uh, is it 8.5? 7.5? Yeah, I'll go for 7.5. There you go. Now, one of the coordinates of the highest point reached by the rocket, we already know it's 5 ants. 25. All right, the next one is a weird question. They go a bit crazy here. I'll explain why. When they talk about 6 and 24, do you know what that means? Six seconds in, the height is 24. Next thing. Seven seconds in, what does that mean? Height is 21. Did you lose height or gain height? Lost height would be a negative slope. So if you do the slope formula for this, which is your y2 over y1 and your x2 minus x1, technically I know that's not coming up, but you need to know the basic slope formula. Your slope, your answer will be, uh, what's it, 24, take away 21, over 7, take away 6, which would be an answer of 3. You know what that three means? You're going three meters per second downwards. Does everybody get that? You were at 24, now you're at 21. You're going three meters per second downwards. Now, what do you expect when you get the slope of 721 to 816? What does that mean? 721 means seven seconds you're at a height of 21, and then at eight seconds you're at a height of? 16. What's the drop this time? Seven. Drop of five. Five meter drop in one second. So your slope will be, your slope this time will be five. Actually, I think it's minus five, is it? Yeah. Oh, sorry, guys. Sorry, yeah, sorry, I'm wrong. It's seven minus eight, which is minus five. And on the previous one, which is also my fault, it's actually six take away seven. What does the minus mean? It means it's going down three meters. And this one's going down five meters. Does that make sense? Seven seconds you're at a height of 21. Eight seconds you're at a height of 16. That means you're dropping five meters every second. That's why it's a slope of minus five in that case. Okay, next thing. Find the HDT. What does the HDT mean? Oh, uh, yeah. And in the context of this question, if the height or distance is given to you by the first derivative, Peter will need to know this. Is pretty important. If the height or the first, if the height or distance is given to you by the original formula, what does the first derivative equal then? First derivative is actually the velocity. Now, by telling me what the second derivative would be, acceler. First derivative is the slope and the velocity at the same time. You know what I'm saying? The slope of a distance time graph is velocity. So you're right. First derivative is always slope, but in the context of this question, it's also the velocity. So what do we get when we differentiate that? Excellent. Find the maximum height. What happens to the velocity when you reach your top? Zero. Slope is zero and velocity is zero, so therefore 10 minus 2t equals zero, 10 equals 2t, and we know that t equals five. How'd you find their original height then? Pull it back in, and what do we expect the answer to be? We already knew it from earlier. Awesome. Okay. Now, speed. Let's keep going here. What's the speed? First derivative is first derivative is your speed, which is ten minus two t. T has to equal 
10 minus 2 times 3. 4 meters per second. Awesome. Very close. Finally, find the coordinates. Find the coordinates at which the slope is 2. A slope of 2 means you're actually going 2 meters up and one, 1 second across. Do you get what I'm saying? You're rising up by 2. Your slope equals 2. 10 minus 2t equals 2. Minus 2t equals minus 8. t will equal 4. 4 seconds in, you're on your way up at 2 meters per second. Is that it? Oh, thank God.